Hello and welcome back to another video tutorial from LearnEnroute.com. And in this series of clips, I get to show you the pre-release version of our latest module, Enroute Fabrication, as well as some of the new and exciting tools and features that we'll be releasing to the general program in the near future. And in this clip, I want to talk about common line cutting. And common line cutting is something that we've got a lot of requests about, and we're finally ready to show it to you and release it to you. Now, what we call common line cutting is nesting groups of objects so that one pass of the tool will cut two objects in, in one shot as long as they've got uh, long straight edges to them. And, and this is going to save a lot of time in production uh, while you're working instead of having to go around all the way around each piece uh, and cutting air a lot of times because you've already cut the kerf. It's basically you set up the nest so that the parts are laid out so that one pass of the tool will actually cut one side of two different objects. And uh, it's a pretty nice tool and we've been waiting a long time for it and I'm happy to show it to you now. So as with all the new nesting tools, what you want to do first is select the objects that you want to nest before going into the tool. And again, this is the pre-release version, so I'm working off of my little pre-release toolbar here. And I'm going to go to my nesting tool and click here. And uh, basically, again, the the uh, programmers have worked very hard to sort of bring together as many dialog boxes as possible so you have one common area. And we've already talked about the shape nester, and now we're going to work with the block nester, which is where we find common line cutting. So we've got the same setup that we had before, and we're going to work with it slightly differently here. But right here is where the rubber hits the road, is that we can create common line. And since these are regular square parts and I don't have any grain to them, I'm going to check on allow rotate to try to maximize the yield on the nest as much as possible. So again, they're all sort of this pink pre-selection color, so I'm going to pick one of the objects, and I'm going to say, let's make four of those. And again, the priority sets the uh, where it is in the nest and uh, how it's going to be nested on the sheet, depending on the part. Now, nested on the sheet, uh, with common line cutting, the program's going to take care of that, but I'm going to give it a priority one. And uh, on the gap here, we're going to leave it set to the kerf of your machine. Now, is, since I'm working with fabrication here and all my other videos, I'm picking the 50 thou kerf on that. I set my gap here at 50 thou. If you're using a router or something else, you would set that to the diameter of the tool that you're going to use for the common line cut. Um, everything else here we can just let go at this point and uh, I'm gonna pick this and say uh, let's make f seven eight eight of those okay and we'll just leave that at one click apply and see very quickly it's created this and you can see that I've got uh, a whole bunch of open contours here now if I zoom in let's zoom in on a corner here you can see that there's my uh, there's my original object and here's now my new common line curves right in between them and another nice thing about this nester is it keeps all those lines grouped so all you have to do is click on one of them and you've picked all your common lines that you just created with the nester and now it's a simple matter of just going to the engrave tool that makes the most sense because it's going to be cutting along the center of the tool and I'm picking my 50 thou curve tool and, and you'll see if I scroll down here to the bottom we've got a few new end mills added to this group just for the different kinds of curves and uh, since we're using a standard strategy and we're not using the um, the kerf compensation tool I need to give it a depth so I just put a depth of one thousandth of an inch here to give en route something to actually bite into when it's calculating the toolpath and I click OK and again very quickly it's developed these toolpaths and now if I go back up to my old friend simulate render and I start playing it you're really going to see that we're saving time notice that it's just going up all the long cutting lines first and it's cutting this instead of going around these pieces one part at a time it's cutting those common lines 
And on a job like this, you're going to be saving yourself a lot of wear and tear on your consumables, as well as time cutting the job out on the machine. So this is something that's going to really be a great production boost for a lot of different people. And as usual, I hope this helps.